questions here. Yagao has been so good in this setup meta now where everyone underestimated him as a mid laner. See what he can perform early on with. Certainly pressure though. Into the Cassante, not always going to be super comfortable. Might just want to clear the wave and walk away. T1 a lot of tools to potentially break open in this early game. The only CC source that's reliable for the side of BLG is the Gallia. It's going to be huge for Yagao. He needs to make sure that he's performing in this game. It's pretty much all on him to set these fights up or stop these fights if T1 want to pull the trigger. And I think that's the thing. T1 definitely want to try and I'll jump in on top of you, right? A very short range composition. But the thing is, a lot of us, when you look at the setup here for BLGs, you don't really have the range to take full advantage of it. Yes, you got the double AD carry, but it still feels like a huge amount of this is going to be a case of can we spread out these fights? Can we buy space for the double AD carry in the back line? And if you actually find T1 in a position, trying to jump on them is going to be so difficult to do. A lot of counter engage there for BLG. Kindred ultimate, Galio ultimate, peeling back with Lulu. T1 have to be very, very particular with their engages, and especially Karia. A lot riding on Karia's shoulders here with the Rakan. Oftentimes, it can be super hard to play that champion into teams that have so much counter engage. Being squishy, possibility of those counter kills. And to all the T1 fans watching this, if you believe in them, they need to hear you now. Their backs are against the wall. It is do or die. When I think of T1 though, and when I think of Cassante for Faker, this has been when they've had their standout moments. This has been where Faker has been able to pop off, step forward, and be that veteran on this T1 roster. Make sure that he is driving T1 forward. And here against BLG once more, it feels like it's going to be resting on his shoulder. See if he can get control with this top side. Very scrappy, very heavy skirmish top side. And I expect to see a lot of that coming where T1 try and look for these invades. See if they can get on towards Shun and support owner in his endeavor to shut down this Kindred. And the odds just continue to stack against them. Bin, 12-1 on this win on the international stage. Three of those wins were versus T1 at MSI Finals last year. Whatever happens in the lane, they have to take Bin out of the equation. They have to shut BLG down. Top lane carry matchups here. Zeus versus Bin. This is what a lot of people love to see. Can Zeus bounce back after his mishap in the previous game? Raptor start for Shun on the Kindred. Will be able to get his red buff very early oh, on. One. Yep, Yagao goes top. The, they want this Gwen into Cassante. They, the, they want the Gwen into Cassante so much more. It does mean that you don't get full value from Yagao's ultimate though when he does hit six. So I'm curious to see if they do end up swapping back a little bit to make sure that they're going to be safe. But in general, Galio should be relatively safe up in this top side. And going to be able to get away from some of this. But already action on the bottom side. Knight coming out early from Carrier, just trying to get a bit of extra advantage. Ghost now being popped by Elk. They're trying to poke back, hoping to get at least a summoner back for Guma, but Guma standing strong. Nice little zigzag there. Pops the Ghost for the move speed for the Jukes. The LG do end up winning out, though. Both summoner spells burned on support and AD carry. And you can also see just the health trade as well. So BLG still managing to get decent push and not a huge amount wasted as Yago. Yeah, there you go, gets the knock-up, and this is what they're going to say. A lot of this is going to be a case of you being able to dismantle a lot of Zayas trying to go in, as you can try and walk away, even just stuff like if you're looking at a dive, you have to tank so much of that with that W. And Bain at the moment getting a hell of a good time against this Cassante. We're spotted out now by Shun. They're both on both sides, going to pop in. Leap over the wall to take owner out to safety. Shun, does he want to keep this one going? Has the reset. He's just going to contest here on the bottom side. Potentially setting up for a bot lane dive. They've already got the Ignite and the Ghost out of Guma. Still both flashes up and available, however, and Shun just on the hunt here. Owner not going to spot him out there. I like the pressure here, forcing Owner to come shadow. Shun over the wall, just laying down a bit of damage, making sure the jungler cannot help. So good. Shun playing off his bottom side, pressuring under tower, forces jungler. Taking the time, Glitterland's going to hit two. Trying to isolate and shut down the T1 bottom lane. Three minutes into the game. High stakes potential dive situation here. T1 desperately trying to clear the wave. Kha'Zix on the backside, ready to mark them. Snare already coming through. Gamora won't have that cooldown for the next few seconds. But they've cleared enough of the wave that BLG do not hold the trigger on the dive. And this pressure is so good for BLG. Just mirroring jungles and waiting for Scuttlecrab spawns. Oh. It's a bottom side Scuttlecrab with the mark as well for Shun. In the mid lane. In addition to denying those minions on bottom side, look at the Zaya already, again, falling behind in minions. Owner's reset though, and Shun knows that he's moving back down. Bin onto Faker in the mid, but bot lane, the repeat dive is around. 
Continuing to outtrade in the mid lane. Guma now going to be in trouble. Carry has to do everything he can to protect his AD carry, but it might not be enough. Guma taking out the dive clean this time. And they won't fumble it again. Elk going to walk away, blinking, but still standing. Really good stuff there by on Lulu. Hits him with the polymorph. Tanks tower, flashes out, secures the kill for the team. Gives it to the Kindred. I honestly even like that more sure. than giving it. Waiting to see if Finn wants to go for it. Four stacks on the snip snip. Owner now coming in. Maybe can punish Finn for playing so aggressively in the mid lane. Finn's got flash too. Finn just a quick dash out to safety. A bit of poke to even up the lane matchup. But right now, everything going in the favor of BLG. 800 gold in their favor at this stage of the game already. But the thing is, Owner hasn't got to clear his top side at all this entire game. Same when you kind of look across at Shun. So much of that focus has been on that bottom side of the map that we're not seeing a huge amount of CS taken up. And for Owner, that's going to end up setting him behind because he needs to be in a position where he's in the lead. Look, Kindred is the same. You want your, this AD carry to be pumping out damage, but at least you get value from that Lamb's Respite. You get value from the kill he's managed to pick up. But Owner's been trying to just keep T1 in check, and as a result, is starting to fall behind the rest of the game. Yeah, and that's why I really like the Kindred actually getting that kill there. Pickaxe right back out onto the map. He gets to move that advantage around. Knock up there, though. Clean, immediate fall up the snare. Now going to come back. Kuma and Carrier fighting back, finding a kill on the bottom side, a clean pickoff. That is much needed for T1. Big stuff there. Gold going into Guma Yushi, helping him catch right back up. Crucial that they're able to find those avenues, especially with how difficult mid lane was going early on in the game. Baker now feeling a bit more comfortable. Wandering out of lane as he has a brief moment where the wave is pushed in, can clear out some of this vision, take a bit more control on the top side. We check in, of course, the Galio. Uh, can try and trade against the Jacks, but will not have an all-in threat here. It's just set up there to survive, see when they can actually enable Yagao to free up on the map, as you mentioned earlier, Dagda. And now Shun uncontested as he starts the Infernal Break. Yep. They, they should be able to pick up this objective. We do have the support recalls, though, so... Carry is back out on the map, gonna come over, pop the Scryer's Bloom. Nice little window, though, of course, C1. Nice punishment on On. They know he didn't have Flash. Owner positioning for another steal. Blast cone in, jump out. For an angle. Death to take this one away, and he gets oh, it! Oh, no. Every time! Damn, that feels so good as a jungler. He's in his head. You are mine. Another smite steal for owner. I mean, at what point do we take the title away from Dandy? When is owner the new Prince of Thieves as he finds yet another objective steal in this game? Faker now moving up to the top lane. Ulti available as well. Yagao has to be careful to survive here. Trying to clear the wave, trying to delete it as quickly as he can. Just got the old things. <laughs> yeah. Walk up, big AOE auto, clears it out. Yeah, as you said, he went after shock brome plating. The guy was just looking to hold up there, but bottom side on, on, again. on, cut out again. Elk not able to do anything here on the bottom side. Kuma finding another kill. This is huge for T1. Kuma and Carry are clawing their way back into this bottom side. Now with two kills on towards the Zaya. It's absolutely massive. And so much of that stemming from the fact they didn't have to invest time into taking the dragon. They steal it away. And now they get pressure top. They get pressure on bot. And T1 are fighting back. They're so good at identifying. The only opening on the map for them. There it is. In 613, right as that tick of damage. Able to get it. But they're so good at identifying the only opening there. On, he just pulled off a tower dive on us and he flashed out. Okay, we're gonna punish him for it. Over and over. Carry a lockup, blade collar from Guma, owner even goes down there, and that's back to back plays to punish that offensively blown flash. It's also the fact that Carry is coming completely out of vision every time he's going on to me. Can't get polymorphed as he's coming through because he's just moving too quickly, so on isn't getting that opportunity to try and disengage. So really good stuff from Team One's bottom lane and just setting themselves up now for the first time really having, well, I'll say the kill advantage, still a good bit of that CS lead is going across towards Elk at the moment, though. Certainly is. Something to keep track of as we get later in the game, these first item spikes especially. Harold now spawned and available. See which side wants to force for it. You see Ping is coming down onto it from Shun. T1. And the Zaya Rakan, we were promised that this is a, a, a duo that you cannot give them. BLG managed to beat it in game one, but game two off to an incredibly good start for the T1 bottom lane. Now we want to see if BLG can try and use this for the Rift Herald. A lot of their combo relying on the fact that Yago is now hit level six. Bin has control over that mid lane as well. And even Elkanon, you can see, starting to get pushed in the spot side. Will actually spot out Carrier. Faker isn't in a position to really follow up here. Knock up, flashed out immediately. I like this fight because as long as BLG keep the bottom lanes from roaming, there is an advantage for them on the top side. Yagao trying to push out. Taunt gonna land. 
Finn, is he ready to go back in? Shun now trying to make it out over the wall, trying to get in and grab the eye of the Herald. Now immediately going to throw down the Lamb's Respite. The Galio coming in. Zeus has a brief moment to try to make it out of this one. The stun coming in from Zeus. is massive. They find three. Faker isolates Ben in the follow. -up. Faker going all out on the top side. He will look to take down Ben. Ben flat, but he's pulled back. And from over the wall, Faker finds the kill. But here is Elk. Elk looking to reset. Elk looking to find the fight, but there is no fight left for BLG. Elk, though. Continuing to buy expectations, leaping out over the wall. Carrier ready to follow up. Carrier ready to respond. The red buff will it be enough? Belk finally taken down as Carrier takes the kill. And in game three, T1 are coming alive. They find the fight in the pit. They manage to get the kills on BLG. And BLG left scrambling in this one. They see the engage on the faker, but shun under so much pressure from Zayas. They all try to fall back. And But the problem is they invest everything while this Lamb's Respite is still up. Zayas doesn't go down. Incredible flash forward there to stun all three members and set up 4T, one of that top side. Elk does manage to come in and get himself a double kill as they manage to rotate faster. But as T1's bot lane matches, that's where it's fall apart for BLG. Yeah, you can see the split second in the shot calling change on the side of BLG. Area here does get a little bit of chunk damage onto Shun. Runner now coming in. Shun needs to make his way out as quickly as he can. Q over the wall on waiting over the wall. They will not opt to follow up, but a lot of damage down onto that Kindred. The gold neck and neck. 300 advantage to T1 with the Herald to the side of BLG. But we saw that moment when the shot calling changed. Shun was like, you know what? Herald, boom, I got it. I'm going to leave now, not stick around for that eyeball. But then they made the call. Our bottom lane is leading on the rotation up. Delay, delay, we can actually fight this slowly. And it's the tenacious chase from T1 that collects the extra kills. And as you said, the overlap there of the Galio on the Kindred ult, while uh, Zeus was still protected. The problem is it's fixed a lot of the problems for T1 on this top side, though. You can see there, T1 trying to leverage the fact that they have push in the spot side to now con constantly invade onto Shun, make sure that he's very uncomfortable, and it's opened up Owner to finally play this 1v1 matchup a little bit more aggressive. Shun will just be spotted in mid lane a little bit, but I am curious to see how he decides to use this Herald, because with the presence that T1 now have on this bottom side as well, it becomes very difficult for him if he ever runs into Owner. Tricky game now, T1, so many tools to start the fights off. We've seen Karia so consistent on these Rakan engages. So they may try to make a play on the bottom side. Double control wards, protecting BLG, protecting Elk, make sure the dive can't come through. But a second Dragon over to T1. So early in the game, they are set up to stack very cleanly to a soul. Harold dropped mid in the response as well. Faker's there. They should be able to usher it up to a charge at least though, and at least get the expected value here. It's, it's aggroed on minions currently. Okay. Trying to get in, hit the eye. No. Owner now coming in, charge will connect. Crucial for BLG, would have been devastating to not have that extra influx of gold. You can see the even brought Yago down. They really wanted to make sure that they were able to get that play happen. Yago will be able to move back up towards his top side though, make sure he's okay as Elk pushing in the spot side again. Just BLG trying to see if they can scramble for anything they can pick up on the map right now. Elk oh. trying to leverage the value of the Vampiric Scepter there in the trade. The team getting aggressive, willing to tank the tower overall. But on the top side of the map, Galio's life is about to get a lot more miserable. Zay is finally completing the Divine Sunderer. It's going to be pretty impossible to push the Jax out of lane now. And Elk is nursing that small lead in the bottom side on this area again. BLG going to try and leverage as much possible juice into him as possible for a repeat of that one. I think a huge amount of that is going to rely on people like Yago and Shun and how they utilize these Lambs Respite. The first combo didn't work out so hot for them in the Rift Herald Pit, so I want to see kind of a slower approach to it where you are on the same page. If you can get it done, it does make it very hard for people like Owner or Zayas to get value, but if Faker is able to drag you out of these ultimates, make sure that you're in a much better spot, that's where T1 can really thrive. Even the fact that Kumiyushi can play so far forward with this Featherstorm as well, you have to be so careful as BLG about how you approach these fights. Yeah, the timing they're going for is difficult. To get Galio ult to come down just after the Kindred ult explodes so that you can make use of the knockup and actually get DPS down there instead of being nullified by your own Invulnerability ultimate is a hard timing to hit, but they got to work on that. Yep. Adapting the execution on the fly is going to be big for BLG. Again, they have the luxury of a 2-0 lead. They can afford to lose a game, but would love to close it out cleanly here. A very aggressive draft. A lot about the counter punch. Zayas and Yigao trade back on the top side. Just a casual 100 healing coming in from a Divine Sunder. That feels pretty great. And I think that's where you're going to have to see this matchup probably change on the top side. I know it's not great for the Gwen either. You know, like a lot of situations, especially with the Divine Sunder already completed versus just been not having that Rift Maker completed. But you need to get access to Yagao's towards multiple side lanes. Also the fact, again, 
I mean, Zay's just free farming up here this whole time. Baker fishing, trying to find an angle, pulling him back into the waiting arms of Owner. Owner trying to finish the job, Ben trying to heal up, but Ben will get taken down. Owner finding the kill in the mid lane. Big stuff for T1 to get some more money on him. He's got that lethality spike. The cheap Umbral Glaive plus serrated Dirk here. And that damage is enough. Elf gonna cruise on in to say hello to Baker and pick up the minion wave as they exit. More resources in the back pocket of Elk, certainly, but good that they're able to slow down Ben, who is dominating at least in the 1v1 trades. Take him a little bit more slow, uh, weaken him overall. We've seen once you get a death cap, once you get two or three items on this Gwen, she can be a team fight terror, so slowing that down is big. And across the map, uh, you can see here, gold differences only in the bot lane and a tiny one in the jungle for the side of BLG. Yeah, and the, the big leverage there for Zeus, when he was able to j slingshot ahead, was that Rift Herald fight. T1 back down those kills. Now we get the rotation, put him inside lane, Divine Sunder Jax, keep on bottom side, rotate AD carries mid to push out the waves. And again, second Rift Herald is up and available. So rotating your vision over here. There's not really much here that BLG can really respond with though. As you say, like T1 have just so much control over the map. You're waiting for that Mountain Dragon that's in a minute and a half. And when you're aimed to have Zeus continuously push against Yago, he's gonna have amazing control. Should be able to get a good amount of control over the river as well. And even when you look at Guma Yushi as well, the wave clear that he has, you're just constantly getting mid and bot prio to move into river. And it makes it so hard for BLG to do anything, which is why we see Shun trying to move down towards his bot side, trying to make a play as the Rift Trial is being taken. Yeah, they know, so they're trying to trade away Way, cross map play here, but scouted out by the ward means it might be a little bit of extra resources here. Carrier comes down to shadow so that there's not too much extra pressure on Zeus at that tower. Mirroring the support roam here from on, setting up that vision preemptively for yeah. the arrival of our Mountain Drake. Good that Carrier is there to cover to stop any potential dives here. BLG uh, trading a guaranteed arrow for a potential play on the bottom side as they were a bit behind on the take. And now the T1 will have to see where they want to leverage that pressure point. If they can start to break open mid, uh, the game gets a lot easier. Good little mark pull here for Shun is at two now as we get our resets for the Dragon. Trying to retake now for owner or for T1 is so difficult. They know their red quadrant of the jungle has to be littered with wards because they just saw the big power move from BLG setting up for this dragon. And so now they're cautiously retaking this area to give them some sort of footing with which to start up this contest. Again, though, I think you're relatively okay to do this as T1. BLG don't have the best go buttons. It's like an Everfrost or an Aqua from Yago. As you can see, I mean, Carrier in the midst of everyone on BLG is just able to dash away. So this is where BLG need to be the ones that control the space. And already they move into take it. And they're doing just that. They're going to sacrifice their mid wave. And T1's going to pop the Herald to make them really pay for this. Yeah, I'll just burn Taunt a brief window. Owner, of owner, owner. Zayas on the backside as well. Owner ready to steal yet another objective. Evolve Q, Evolve W, bit of poke coming through as BLG just tried to chase Zayus out of the pit. 5k, getting lower. Now they're focusing it down. Are they just going to 50-50 at BLG? It's so difficult for them to force any kind of meaningful fight here. Carrier just walking away, Guma walking away. They don't have the CC to lock down a priority target. BLG being shepherded around and now just getting knocked out of the pit immediately. T1 are going to look to blow it down, but BLG need to force the fight. Faker in the back line is doing so much work. The pullback coming through. Faker makes it out. Galio going into the pit. The dragon to the side of T1. T1 coming alive in game three. Zay is finding a kill. Owner untouched for now, but Elk still stands. He's trying to burn through those health bars. He's still standing. He's still alive. The heal now coming in. Owner finally going to finish the job. It's a massive fight for T1. They stand tall. They get the dragon and they get the kills afterwards. Yagao goes into the pit. Faker running full circle around this fight with Cassante's mobility. We've seen it so many times. It's not, it's, <laughs> well, it's frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you mean? Zeri and Cassante, it all works out well, but True. brilliant stuff from T1. And I think this is where you really exemplify the problems with BLG's composition, oh. where T1 are able to hop in, hop out, shake it all about, and there's nothing that BLG are able to do in the end, because as soon as they try to go on to anyone, T1 just have that mobility and kick it away. I want to see a Faker skin with the Macarena now. Absolutely That's the pokey, pokey, pokey. Ah, close enough. <laughs> Here he goes in. Faker, and it looks like he's so deep, right? But he gets all four. He even gets Shun's flash as he flashes out, and then. Here was that, that re-engage. The Galio ult was already channeling, so then Yagao goes in. But guess what? His teammate's already gone. The dragon's already gone. 
And so if it's, it's an overextension, another mistiming on another Galio ult, and T1 are feasting. It's also just such a spread out fight. Like, the, you don't actually get BLG in a position where they're really getting, you know, Gago at the front line, trying to provide that tank, trying to buy space, because he's looking for the flank oh, in that man. position. And T1 jump a pin's dead! It's dead! T1 finding a pick on the side lane. Carrier looks like setting that up. Hard to say without the context. Had to watch uh, Lulu die a bit horrifically there. And BLG, for the first time, not on even footing, not at a slight deficit, at a massive deficit. Three dragons stacked against them. T1 backs against the wall, the most pressure that could possibly be on them, but they are showing up here in game three. And it feels like such a weird time for BLG to change the game plan, right? When you look towards, hey, look, this Xante ban has worked out absolutely fantastic for us. Faker has been insane on this pick, yeah. and you're starting to see it again in this game. When you have two games in your advantage, to suddenly start to swap it up and change it to what has been a, such a difficult game plan to operate, you can see BLG now struggling, and T1 happy to just find those moments. Zay is hopping forward on towards the ward, Kerry in a great position to follow up, and the side lane control is going to T1. And this is that other side of Bin that people are used to seeing throughout the long extended series. They finally get a pick on him in the side lane. It's not the Giga Bin, it's T1. Now with full control, three dragons, Dragon Soul coming imminently. Baron already arrived at the pit. And they're trying to really take control of the vision here with that Umbral Glaive, clearing everything out. They've got the Rakan, they've got the turn ability. And Faker, last time around, he went straight for Shun. Makes a lot of sense, limiting the Kindred, taking her out of the equation, denying the potential for a 50-50. T1 so many tools to guarantee a secure on this Baron. LG fishing. Tonka to be used though, and again, this is what we've highlighted, Dega, this is what you've highlighted. They can just walk away, and BLG have no way to stop them from doing it. Yeah, and BLG are trying their best, but as long as T1 are the ones that are dictating the pace of these fights, it's so difficult for BLG to really do anything. Kerry now, as you can see, stepping up, he knows there's not a huge amount of it do. He's got the safety of Gimayushi behind him. So with the t team fights going the way of T1, side lane going the way of T1, Vision control the way of T1. I do not see a way that BLG actually managed to come back from this. T1 have such a stranglehold on this game. Absolutely. And here we Area, go. Area. Area. Pick things off. The taunt coming in to stop any potential follow up. Shun now ignited. Zayo's ready to go over the wall. Yagao getting chunked away. And there's Zayo's with the denial coming in for Yagao. Able to find it. The Lamb's Respite on the backside. Faker now ready to move right in. He can tear them out of that Lamb's Respite in an instant. Elk trying to get out, but he goes back into the waiting arms of his team. Faker may have overstayed, may have overstepped his welcome. And again, BLG finds an avenue in the fight for now. It is one for one. Mid laners traded. BLG actually stalling and delaying getting the one for one on Faker this time. He can't get out alive. Yagao goes down, Faker goes down, mid laner's off the board, but T1 still get vision control. And they still get to move into this top side where Zayas can start to put pressure onto the tier two. And this is where, again, BLG, they're trying so desperately to get this combo between the Kindred and the Galliot's work, but T1 are playing these fights so slowly. They're never over committing, they're just throwing in one or two members at a time and getting the Galio low, getting Shun low, so they panic, have to blow this combo early, oh. and it just doesn't quite work out. And Yagao gets the Justice Punch in the air on Zayus. They then try and defend on Kindred ult. They get the heal, Faker jumps in. He ults while Yagao creates this big zone, this big space for BLG. And then they sacrifice one for one. Nobody can cross the Galio ult. They take the Galio in exchange. And ultimately one for one, but again, T1 remain in strong control of this. Mountain Drake spawning now. This is the soul. And BLG are just going to concede it. They don't have the tempo, they don't have the vision. They've got no tools left in the box to contest this one. So it'll just be a free soul. 22 minutes in, Mountain Soul for T1. They can just immediately turn to the Baron. Yeah, BLG have a very tall task trying to delay this game. They need to delay for a long, long, long period to be able to catch back up. But T1 are so good at pushing tempo, they're gonna rotate right over to Baron. They've got the Umbral Glaive, they clear out the vision, they keep looking for picks. Carrier Ultimate is available, Carrier Flash is available. So if they just starve you of vision, they start the Baron, they look for the turns. Eyes on the prize for T1. Don't need to risk anything, don't need to overforce here. Again, the disengage is really the only big threat that BLG have if T1 overcommit, so taking it slow, playing it controlled, starting this objective up. Guma and Faker looking to take this one down slowly but surely. Owner ready to come over the wall with the smite to secure. Zayas hovering, not quite in Fog of War, as the vision is there for BLG to see exactly what he's up to. Kindred can throw down 
Uh, the Lambs Respite to slow this one. Owner going over the wall, now the fight kicking off, but Carry already ready to engage on getting lower and lower. Lambs Respite again, getting a moment. Elk over the wall, but he's not really able to hit any priority targets. And Guma setting up the feathers in the choke. There's no angle here for BLG to fight. Forced away, blinking health bars. It's the Baron for T1. No ultimate on Yago. It only just come off cooldown. So T1, find that window of opportunity, jump onto BLG, and now the Baron is theirs. BLG trying to see if they can remount an offense, though. Baker can just alt out of the pit can deny him access but Ben waiting over the wall as well BLG no it's all or nothing it is now or never but the jungler taken out of the equation should barely able to escape but Faker secures the Baron for his team Ben now moving in taking out Faker but BLG there is no fight left it is the Baron it is the soul for the side of T1 only at the cost of Faker's life noble sacrifice there from the T1 mid laner Baker keeps the smite steal away even though owner has been so good they don't risk it they teleport back in aggressively be back on the top side Zayas polymorph, he can't leap in. Aggressive, but owners here as well. Kuma behind them. They're trying to shepherd BLG in, but they have to be careful. Yagao, Gwen now immune. Feathers now flying. Shun looking to follow up. Gumushi can just pull them back. He's got so much zone control, but it's an aggressive, aggressive TP. They do not want to give BLG the chance to back and reset. Ultimately, maybe a bit too aggressive, but it doesn't cost T1 much of anything. But they still manage to step away. BLG will do the same. Now T1 can actually start to get a lot of offensive plays down though. Zayas has still control of the side lane, but we're, watch here. Look at the cooldown that's on the... Well, we're not going to really see it. There's just barely a cooldown on the Galio ult. So should not really in a position off this fight to go for it. Actually, this is the re-engage here. But you get Kazante going immediately onto Shun, prevents him coming over the wall. And then this is where Yago does manage to just barely miss out and T1 are able to run away. I mean, ever since I've gotten control in this game, they have not been giving a single inch to BLG, and yes, part of that is BLG have a, a limited composition in terms of what it can do, but this is the version of T1 that fans wanted to see, the one that will choke you out, that will take over in the early game and keep that ball rolling. Yeah, honestly, the Kindred ult now is only, like, delaying the bite of T1. They're still able to run BLG off of their own defensive cooldowns here, even at tower, aggressive positioning. Duma Gale Force, stopwatch now coming out. LG just pushing back and using so many resources to deny the wave. They do get the Gale Force from Guma, but not a lot else. And Owner is going to be able to 1-4 here. The jungler, Gazix, with the Baron buff, easily gets secondary tower. The rest of the team forcing BLG back. Baron empowered cannon minions slowly chunking away. Oh, continuing to step forward here, but has to be careful. A single misstep could cost him his life in the game for BLG. Two minutes and 30 seconds till Elder is on the table. I don't think T1 have any real reason to flip it for that objective. Can just continue to press in with this Baron. 42 seconds left. I think that Elder is kind of the last remaining opportunity for BLG. Bin launches himself into the piss. Yagel follows up. Maybe he can buy some space, but T1 may not give him that opportunity. Isaiah's looking for the flank. Trying to see if he can get in. Owner onto Bin in the mid lane. Bin just getting chunked out in the mid lane. Firing back. The snip. Here comes Elk as well. Owner just going to leap out to safety and walk away. And again, BLG, even if they find an avenue of attack, every single cooldown on T1 needs to be down for them to find a, a single pick or kill. Yeah, BLG are looking 10, 15, even 20 minutes into the future here. Just trying to hold, trying to farm. T1 want to put as much pressure on them as possible. Getting these secondary towers down, increasing that gold lead really starts to balloon now. You, you have to get creative here as BLG. If you just go up into a straight of 5v5, T1 are going to take it. And the opportunity here for T1, look, the Baron buff is gone, but they're still going to put pressure on the top side. Try and take that last outer structure has been by Picasso. The dash out to safety, able to get away from the charm as well as the knockup. We're going to cost him his ultimate, which will matter in fights to come, but I think for now, just going to try to clear the wave. All right, Rakan ultimate for Gwen ultimate here. And T1 re-establishing same game plan. Take away all vision through jungle. Keep BLG pinned inside their own territory. So easy now. A minute left until the Elder. Most of their waves pushing. T1 laying down this deep vision that's going to make it so hard for BLG to retake. It feels all but certain to be a T1 win. BLG desperately need to find that avenue of attack, but the options are so limited. And T1, the only reason they're being a bit slow with this magnificent lead that they have is because they need to draw BLG out into the open. Because BLG have so many defensives here under tower, there's only so much forcing you can do. Wait for the Elder Dragon, draw them out into the open. Then you have so many avenues for attacks. The Lord Dominus for Garby being completed for Elk is really nice against how beefy T1 is, but I really don't think at this stage it's, it's going to make that much of a difference. T1, as you say, Kobe, playing this nice and slow, they are 
they it's kind of like a, a lose lose for BLG. You don't want to leave your base because then, as you say, T1 can jump on you, but you have to leave your base because it's five seconds till Elder. So you've now lost all vision control, and it gives an opportunity for T1 to continue to just play forward here. Trying to put in the mid lane, Sean immediately gonna get isolated, forced to flash out to safety, walking back the waiting arms of his team. They're really just trying to get mid control so they have an avenue to attack this Drake. Jack's coming around for a flank too. Look at the minimap here. Deus is walking the long way around. Top lane, here he comes. Here comes the engage. Carry not gonna make it over the wall, though that's disastrous. Elk delivered into the waiting arms anyway, though. Here comes Yagao trying to knock him up. Elk still on touch. Carrier oh, whiffs on the knock up, I think, anticipation, but it's all starting to fall apart. T1 still favored in the fight. Guma continuing to lay down the feathers, but Elk is standing strong. Bin in the mid lane, doing what he can to heal up against Faker. The flash to the side, looking for the sniff, sniff. Zeus ready to go in. The stun getting connect. connect. Zeus finding the kill, finding the angle. T1 holding on, barreling down the mid lane. BLG may have bought themselves a moment but that's about it. The health bars are too low, low for T1 though. BLG will manage to push them back and get out of the base. T1 tried to come in on too many sides and somehow Elk manages to step away. But T1, they reset, they go to the Dragon and they will pick it up. Yeah, that last fight was killer for T1. Bin wanted the 1v1 with Baker, but guess what? Zeus has his back, the Jax comes over, they also kill the top laner, and that means T1 take Elder. Now they've got the execution power to go for Baron. You want to double up your uber buffs, and T1 will come knocking at your door with Elder Dragon as well as Baron. BLG, it's just too risky to fight an Elder Dragon out in the open towards Baron, so now they really have to bunker down. And where's your ults? Shun has no Lamb's Respite, no Grand Entrance for Yagao. You have nothing here that can actually set you up for this team fight. And T1 are aware of it, whereas you look across, the shorter cooldowns coming in clutch now on those ultimates. You have the Elder buff, you have the ults, you have no hope for BLG. It would take an impossible fight. T1, this should just be their victory lap. You will not be stronger than this. Massive gold lead, 10k in their favor. Double uber buffs, the Mountain Soul. Just need to close this one out cleanly. Just need to take us to a game four. BLG, find an angle, maybe, but it's gonna require someone on T1 to overstep, to misstep if they wanna come back to this one. You don't even have like wards you can try and teleport to. You don't really have anything outside your base that you can make function. So for T1, they know they're safe. They've been doing a fantastic job keeping vision control in their favor. And now they're on to the inhibitor turrets, been looking at the tier two. To clear the wave as much as he can. Can is still standing strong again. T1 slow, controlled, waiting for a misstep from BLG before they jump in. And again, they have everything they need to end the game, but why risk it? Play it slow, play it controlled. Your back is against the wall. Giving BLG the benefit of the doubt that they can find that angle and just breaking open mid, breaking open bot one tower at a time. Yeah. You cannot really fight against the Elder Dragon right now. That plus Baron means T1 get inside the base. They will destroy your turrets. You just still have to bide your time. Wait for it to fall off. They're gonna bunker down behind these Nexus turrets, and here it go, T1. Three waves coming in, two cannon minions, three cannon minions. Try to keep this push going. T1 again, they don't need to force a fight, they can just keep poking. They can slowly but surely grind BLG out of this game. Zayo sleeping in, will find the stun. Traded for mobility on the side of Finn. Shun fishing for an angle, has to be careful to step forward here. 12 seconds left on the Baron, or the Elder buff, rather. Maybe they can find that avenue. Maybe they can hold on for another minute or so, but that should just be about it. Immediately, Bin goes gold and buys a brief second. Three seconds left on the Elder, but I don't think it's gonna be enough time. Lamb's Respite now coming in into the back line. Isaiah's denying the Respite angle, but Elk still standing for now. T1 fighting, right, having such a good time in the base as they keep their hopes alive going into game four. T1 still fighting here. They stand up in game number.